Why, good evening, everybody. My name is Cameron, and welcome back to the bar. I hope everybody out there is keeping safe. And if you're not keeping safe, I'm sure you know what you're doing. In which case, continue. Keep doing what you're doing. But, you know, watch the others around you. You never know who might be, uh, might be around and potentially in the way of all of the fun stuff that you might be keeping yourself up to. In any case, how is everybody? I'm doing wonderful. It's been a pretty good week so far in the world of, I guess, my life, I suppose. That's been pretty good. My local little microcosm has been keeping rather cozy. My little terrarium with which I surround myself with to keep myself alive is doing pretty good. The ins, the inputs, and outputs of my local ecosystem is still allowing for me to thrive. And I think from a scientific, biological, and ecological standpoint, I think that's a good thing. Speaking of the environment, I guess, my goal this week was to use a particular cocktail ingredient and find a drink to use for it. And as it turns out, the particular ingredient that I had in mind, which I had an idea of about a week ago, it's, it's, not, it's not anything new, it's not anything crazy, but I was trying to look around my cocktail books and found that I was actually having a hard time finding like the ingredient that I wanted to use in the particular cocktail. One of the things that I kind of criticize about a lot of the books that I have is the fact that you can index by drink name. Sometimes you can index by what type of ingredient you have in there. Like for example, a type of base spirit. You can easily find drinks that start with the letter B or sometimes easily find drinks that include rum, but not necessarily drinks that include like popular mixers such as like cranberry juice. What if I'm just craving something with cranberry juice in it? Oftentimes, it's really difficult to index through these books. Naturally, if I had a PDF of them, I could just control F, but I don't have that luxury on physical books. I don't have those. Uh, there's apparently a site out there where like you can, there's, there's like cookbooks. It could be cookbooks, drink books, whatever. And you subscribe to the service and you tell them what books you have. And then you can look up recipes and stuff or ingredients or whatever. And it'll tell you which book that particular recipe is in and then what page you could find that recipe on in that book. So for example, I don't remember what the website name is. Somebody could probably jog my memory. Somebody texted me once upon a time. It's irrelevant, it's not important. But supposedly, I could look up, I wanna make something with rice, chicken, and mushrooms. And the site would be like, well, as it turns out in your particular collection, book number seven, I don't know, let's say it starts with G, has this recipe and it's on page 223. So I would go into my collection, take out the book that starts with G, number seven, and I'd open up to that particular page. I don't remember what the number was, short-term memory loss, excuse me. And I'd be able to find the recipe in there with all the other fixings and whatnot. And as it turns out, it's kind of difficult to do that. I, not, not a lot of my cocktail books actually index by ingredients specifically. So one of the things that I started doing once upon a time was I have, I have an app on my phone that I use called Recipe Keeper. This is like, I, I guess I would recommend it only because it can take recipes from photos so like you can take a photo and say like, I want this to be the title of it. And it's got a really good character recognition scheme. I don't know what kind of machine learning they've got running in the background, but it's really, really good at picking out all the small letters and whatnot. Although sometimes it misses like a decimal point or a period here and there. So when you have a cocktail recipe that says for 0.5 ounces, sometimes it'll go in there and say five ounces. And you're like, mm, that doesn't seem right. And that little nuance is, you know, based on the context clues, pretty easy to figure out. Obviously, I'm not going to put five ounces into a drink, five ounces of, let's say, cranberry juice into a drink that has only an ounce of, let's say, the base spirit, like a vodka. Although sometimes that's not as obvious. Sometimes it's 0.1. I don't know why you'd use a tenth of a, anything, to be honest. That's a very, very small, small amount. And I don't think anything out there is really that potent, except for like luster dust from an aesthetic standpoint and like chili powder or something else that's spicy, in which case I could understand a tenth of something, a tenth of some unit of measurement to be rather significant. But in any case, um, so I was saying that it's difficult to sometimes find like what like a particular recipe that has a single ingredient or a collection of ingredients. So that app, app helps me out. And another thing that really helps me out too, not like, again, this is just, this is not like sponsorship or anything like that. Just things that I happen to use, just personal recommendations. That particular app, which is called Recipe Keeper, I can put, I put, all of my recipes into it manually, whether they be cocktails or otherwise. I only have one food recipe in there and it is a very killer chicken and rice recipe. I'd be happy to share that at some point in time. It was oh, the best chicken and rice I've ever had. It's the only food recipe I have on that app. But then a bunch of other cocktail recipes and there's like hundred and something in there, maybe, I don't know. Needless to say, this particular app, when you click on the search bar, I can type orange juice, and cranberry juice and whatever and it'll give me 
the drink, the, the recipes that I have in there that include those particular keywords, those particular ingredients, and it'll also tell me just about how much is in them, which is very, very convenient. And I love it. I've been using it for a while. I actually had an idea. I reached out to the, <laughs> the app manufacturer to be like, hey, is it possible that like you got like an API for your app so I can forward emails of my cocktail um, newsletters to my email, port it through your app to add recipes automatically because I think that would be really, really awesome. And they were like, yeah, no, we don't have anything like that. Sorry. I was like, well, that's sad. Okay, well, I will do be doing my own research on that anyway. So I decided to look through my particular app to see if this particular ingredient was up in there. And I found a couple of drinks, but I don't have the ingredients for all of them, so I decided to take it to the web. Long story short, I couldn't find what I wanted to find in my own references, so I went to the internet. But no, 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 I didn't just Google it. I didn't just Google it. I have a particular website that I don't remember how I found it, but a while ago, I think, oh, I remember now. It was, um, I was browsing through Reddit on like r slash bartenders or r slash cocktails, and somebody was like, hey, we've got this site that we're launching up for like, like mixological creators to like post their recipes on. And I was like, sure, why not? I'm gonna sign up for that. I've posted a single recipe on it so far. It's pretty cool. And uh, apparently when you signed up for it, they would send you a hat. And I, I got a hat once a ton of time. But the site is called Crafted Pour, and I've, you know, I, I like it. It's a cute little place. I think it's kind of grown. It's pretty cool. So uh, that's another, that's my second recommendation. One recommendation is if you're looking for a really good recipe app, uh, Recipe Keeper. It works. It's pretty good. I think it's by like a company called it starts with the letter T. I'm pretty sure of that, although I don't know for sure. And then Crafted Pour. I get some cocktail recipes from that. And actually, I was looking around to see if I could find, like, what I wanted to use from recipes on the site, and I managed to do so. The, the, the particular ingredient that I had in mind is honey syrup. Why I made my honey syrup... Let's see, let me pull it out from over here. Honey syrup's really easy to make. Most syrups are really easy to make. You can just combine water and whatever the syrup base is supposed to be and bits of, bits of sugar and whatnot, and you pretty much have a syrup. If you want simple syrup, you take equal parts water and equal parts sugar, and you boil them up. You can add more sugar if you want to. You can mix up your ratios and whatnot, depending on how sweet you want it, and you can get simple syrup. That's pretty simple. You can make more complex syrups, naturally, by adding other stuff to it and whatnot and getting a little bit crazy. But so honey syrup is very, very simple. I think I made mine with just equal parts honey and equal part water. You heat that up on a stove and eventually the consistency will be exactly where you want it. And the reason why you would do something like honey syrup is because honey itself is very, very viscous. That means it doesn't pour super duper well. It's kind of difficult to get like exact measurements because if you put it inside of, let's say your measuring jigger like this and you want, I want an ounce of honey, then there's probably gonna be a good, I don't know, a good fifth, maybe a seventh an ounce instead of the container still left in there because of how viscous it is and it doesn't come out so when you make the syrup it actually flows a lot easier and it's easier to measure stuff with in addition the um whoops my recipe thing just fell i decided to make things a little easier for myself so i, I attached my little cheat sheet via duct tape to my little table here and it fell so that's not gonna work so i'm just gonna keep that there because it's easier i'll come up with a better solution another time but oh what was i saying i was saying about the um the honey, yeah. Honey is really, really viscous, so it reacts more temperamentally, I guess, to different changes of temperature. For example, if you want runny honey, you just heat that stuff up. Maybe mix it with a little bit of water. You got syrup. Perfect. Good on you. But if it gets cold, it can become more viscous, is even less likely to mix with whatever's around it. So I've made, in my personal time, made like a honey-based drink before. Uh, but it wasn't a it wasn't a hot one. It was a cold one So you put the honey and whatnot in your cocktail shaker and it's all cold and you shake it up And you pour it back out and you realize wow This doesn't really taste like honey at all and you look back in your cocktail shaker and you're like Oh my god There's a bunch of honey just on the bottom of my cocktail shaker because it's so damn viscous and it gets caught within like all of the ice and whatnot and stuck on the walls It doesn't make it into the drink now Maybe I'm just doing my mixing wrong perhaps I should be blending it or maybe I should be shaking it even like shaking the shit out of this thing even harder but you know, I gotta, I gotta watch my arms. I don't wanna like pull a muscle or a tendon or whatnot. And I'm sure there are people out there who are much stronger than I am, but also more frail than I am. And I feel like a pretty frail individual. I don't have a lot of meat on me to be perfectly honest, but if I can snap my tendons and whatnot, hopefully not, then I'm sure there are other people out there who can do so as well. And well, we don't, we don't wanna be in pain. If you're not in a good state, if you're hurting, don't hurt. Hurt no good, hurt bad. But in any case, I managed to find a recipe using honey syrup. Wow, how long have we been talking about this? Anyway, yeah, I'm the recipe, I guess. But so I, I browsed a little bit of crafted porn. I found, found a creator on there who goes by Avalon Home Bar on Instagram. Give credit where credit is due. I ain't stealing things over here. That's a, that's a bad move. I'd be angry if somebody stole my stuff. I mean, I guess it wouldn't be angry, but I'd be like, yo, bro, you want to... I'm gonna put my tag down there and I put my put my little tag down there because that'd be pretty cool. That'd be pretty cool. Like and share. Like and share all the time. But make sure you share the right link because that'd be cool. 
I'm trying to get the duct tape off of my pad. Excuse me there. Cool, cool. In any case, this particular one that I found on Crafted Poor uh, by somebody who goes on Instagram by Avalon Home Bar is called the Black Light. Apparently, the Black Light was inspired by another cocktail beverage from, um, I think, a book called Smuggler's Cove. It's apparently a popular one out there. Haven't read it personally. I'm not big on books. But the drink in there is called the Port Light, which I think uses, I believe, a rum base and guava or passion fruit. I think it's passion fruit and rum. And in this case, the Black Light, a spin on the Port Light, uses rye and blackberry. And I have a little spin on that too, because as it turns out, I don't have blackberry liqueur and I don't have, or I don't have blackberry syrup. I could have made some. I went to the store and bought my blackberries, my blackberries, and I could have just put them in a pot, mixed it with sugar, and made some blackberry syrup. But I just didn't want to. I was being lazy today. So the blackberry is only going to be the garnish. So instead, I'm, sh I'm switching it out with black raspberry. So it's not, it's not quite the blackberry, but it is a blackberry. And I'm not talking about the cell phone either. I would not want to sink my teeth into one of those. That sounds dangerous and probably not so tasty. Although I did garnish a drink one time with actual electronic circuit boards. I did not bite them. And they are fully clean. They were fully cleaned. And they are not in my possession anymore because I was told to get rid of them. So I did and I wouldn't be using those. Although I'm very curious to see whether a computer would run with those RAM sticks. Anyway. Whatever. So... The black light, which I've modified just slightly, uses rye whiskey, a little egg white, lemon juice, honey syrup, uh, in this case black raspberry liqueur as opposed to the black berry liqueur, uh, and some, actually, it was originally with, excuse me, it was with blackberry syrup originally, and I'm using blackberry liqueur, and I changed up the ratios a little bit because I figure if I'm adding a liqueur to it, I'm going to dial back on the alcohol, so I'm going to cut the base spirit of the rye by just a half an ounce and then add that half an ounce to where the syrup would have been. The syrup was usually half an ounce, now it's an ounce. But it's not syrup, it's the court in this case. I try to change things around. I got a method to my madness behind there. I don't know if it's useful information, but I'm gonna give it anyway because sometimes, sometimes it's always about getting into the mind of the creator. There's a show out there that I've never watched called how to be a murderer or like inside of the mind of the murderer or something like that i haven't watched it why would i know the name but so apparently there's the you know there's the idea of like i want to know what's going on in your head i want to know what's going on what's your mentality behind things and that was mine so take it or leave it thank you very much for coming to my show that's it bye just kidding that's not it i'm grabbing my cocktail shaker so the first thing that we're going to do for this particular beverage is we're going to add some rye whiskey to it i'm not adding any ice to my glass we're going to dry shake things first because we're going to add some egg white which is going to give a bit of a foam toward the very end and you want to wet shake and you want to dry shake that stuff first and by dry shake i mean there's just no ice in it there's no ice in these things it's warm and you got to be careful with it or else you know things might get all over the place so uh, I have an entire carton of eggs back here because uh, I mess these things up constantly and I don't really want to mess it up again. Hey, oh, how have folks been? Been doing pretty good over here. Work is the, just the right amount of a little bit of stress and a little bit of fun. or But like the, the ratio is different than that. It's a lot of fun with a little bit of stress. But that's how jobs can be sometimes. Nobody's perfect. I'm having a good time. I'm learning a lot of information here. But let's try to very... Uh, I don't need the egg yet. I'm going to add the rye first. Actually... This is what I'm gonna do. I am very prone to screwing things up, so I'm actually gonna do the egg white first because if I get the egg white in the rye whiskey, that's some good rye whiskey. I wasted the whiskey. I don't wanna get yolk in there. I just want the white. I just want the white. So, actually I will have a little apparatus that helps me out here. I don't know what they call these things, but I'm calling it a yoker. And the yoker catches the oak, the, the oak, the yolk, and then the rest of the egg white just kind of flops out the other side. So I don't know if this is gonna work. This is how I'm gonna do it. There might be a better way to do it. I don't know. I'm gonna put my egg yoker on top of my apparatus here. I'm gonna crack my egg white. Yolk catcher, I'm down with it. Uh, I'm not gonna crack an eggs either. And then I'm just gonna kind of like crack the egg over top of this and it should catch the yolk. The yolk, I mean. Yeah, look at that. Wow. That was probably the best I have ever used this thing as. Wow, that's incredible. There we go. Uh, uh, although it's kind of like seeping out the side. Honestly, we don't need that much egg white in there. So I think that's enough. Hold on. Let me grab my, I have my, I have my, I have a dirty bin. I have my trash bin over here because I don't want to make a total mess. And to be perfectly honest, 
mess with egg yolk, not so good. I'm gonna try my best to not crack that yolk because then it'll be an absolute hassle to clean up and whatnot. What we got going on here? It's a yolk catcher. Yeah, it catches the oak like a lumberjack. Dude, okay. If you're a lumberjack out there and you have the pure, unadulterated strength to catch an entire oak tree in your hands, I applaud you. I think I would be crushed. I feel like most humans would be crushed, but you know, there are some super superhumans out there, but I'm sure they don't get the media attention that they deserve. Superman, I see you. Batman, I see you. Omni-Man, stay off my planet. Thank you very much. So. The second ingredient was the egg white. I didn't want to mess it up, so I did it first. The first ingredient is one and a half ounces of rye whiskey, or about 44 milliliters. I have the one rye whiskey that I've had for a while. Haven't needed to get any others, but uh, apparently I use it a lot. I'm getting it here pretty good. It's Old Forester. It's great. I love it. It's got a little bit of a spice to it, and it was bought to me by a friend. Thank you, Pepper. I appreciate you greatly. We bought this on the night that we watched Dune because the spice must flow, and rye, rye has the spice. So the spice plus the spice, the spice of the drink plus the spice of the movie makes the spice of the night makes the spice of life, baby! Also, if you walk without rhythm, you won't attract the worm. Uh, that's all I'll say there. What else we got here? Batman having no powers is kind of his plot point. This is a good point. You're absolutely right there. You got me. Congrats. You did it. Ding! Anyway, so I need a half, one and a half ounces of my rye whiskey. It's whatever you got. I got a little Forester. I'm sure being that this is a modification of a modification itself, you can use whatever you want to. Honestly, if you are enjoying what you have in your glass, then you're absolutely doing it correctly. That's, that's all I'm saying there. If you like it, I like, there, there's, a, there's videos that I've seen online recently about uh, the topic of the the topic of the, the video is like, oh my God, look at these crazy things that people ordered at the bar. And it's kind of like making fun of the things that they asked to switch out and whatnot. And don't get me wrong, some of that stuff is totally wacky. Like, I don't know who would want to actually drink Tabasco sauce, sal salsa, and Jaeger. I don't know why you would want to do that unless you're morbidly curious, like I once upon a time was. However, I mean, if you really, if you genuinely like what is in there, then I have no right to criticize you for what you like. You have subjective taste just like I do, and just because everybody says, you gotta make a Manhattan this way, or you gotta use this type of vermouth whenever you do things like that, doesn't mean that you have to. Then again, I suppose some would call it a very liberal perspective, in which that's the case. All right, I take that for my drinking and whatnot. So what I'm gonna do is with the egg white, and the rye, I'm gonna dry shake it. There's a little physics going on here, so like, you know, this thing, this thing might get out of control if you don't keep it keep it taut there. There's a whole like dynamics of like temperature and stuff and whatnot. But alas, we don't have space for that. So I'm just gonna shake this as hard as I possibly can. It's not gonna make a lot of noise because there's really nothing in there. There's really nothing in there. If not for the alcohol, you'd be worried bro would try it. Oh goodness, no. I don't, I don't think Lycus needs any bit of this. Oh my goodness. Although to be perfectly honest, Tabasco plus salsa plus uh, let's see what's a good stand-in for Jaeger um, plus licorice. Let's go licorice plus salsa plus Tabasco. I feel like that's a thing that would happen. Also, you, I don't know if you heard that, but it kind of the pressure kind of popped a little bit. So watch out, watch out when you do things like that. So dry shaking this gives the egg a little bit of time to kind of like mix in, break apart, break apart all those proteins and stuff. And then we're gonna add some ice and whatnot to it. And I have ice, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab a cube of ice, one cube of ice from my thing over here, and then a little bit of a little bit of small ice. I got I got some little bits of small ice in here. How to do one cube? Carefully, carefully, carefully. Don't want to splash this up. There's an egg in there. That sounds disgusting. Goodness gracious! Licorice like a Twizzler, like a like a black Twizzler, like black licorice. Like that's kind of, in my opinion, Jaeger most prominently tastes like like a bold candy licorice. Um, so, so I would say some people would say like absinthe is kind of like that too. I wouldn't say absinthe is like as licorice -y, although it is licorice -y, but I think it's more like fennel, which is a completely different thing entirely, supposedly. I don't exactly know. I, I've eaten raw fennel before, but I haven't eaten like raw licorice root. And to be perfectly honest, just like the case of like sassafras root and like Coca-Cola, I don't know, if, I don't know if licorice root actually tastes like licorice. They could very well be com two completely separate things. I have no idea. The black co ooh, the black cousin you follow. Ooh, very nice, very nice. So I've got my ice in my drink now. Uh, I already dry shook. I'm following my instructions. I have all my instructions on here, and it says, give credit where credit is due. Done. Rye whiskey. Done. Egg white. Flip those. Dry shake. Got it. And now I need lemon juice. Let's go with lemon juice. I'm gonna grab a lemon. I have a lemon in my in my squeezer and my squeezer and my and my cutting board. I got my cutting board. Here we go. Cutting board. Squeezer, little dingling, love that dingling, and uh, I'm gonna try not to hurt anybody with this knife over here. 
We get it. Um, this is how you cut a lemon. Lemon. Cut. Never cut toward yourself. Bad idea. Measure twice. Cut once. I need only an ounce or about 30 milliliters of the lemon juice, so I really don't need this entire lemon here, uh, but we'll put it to good use elsewhere. I've been working on this trick. How's this look? Watch this. Wow, it was so cool. And you put it in there, and it's like, it actually doesn't fit much in there. This is a very thick lemon, to be perfectly honest. It's a very thick lemon indeed. Just it in there, and I only need about an ounce. I honestly probably won't even get an entire squeeze out of this guy. We'll try it anyway. You are proving to be very difficult, probably because there's a lot of rind on you, but I'm gonna squeeze until you just can't squeeze no more. I gotta use my dominant hand association. Oh my god, this is annoying. I don't have a lot of upper arm strength. I tried once upon a time to work those things out, and well, that was like two or three years ago. But, but, with the amount of squeezing that I was able to pull off with my tiny, weak, frail arms, I have an ounce of freshly squeezed lemon juice. <laughs> All right, and I'll put that. Oh, the only container I have is with the egg, the egg yolk. It's fine, I'll clean it later. It's okay, it's fine. We'll just, we'll just like do that over there. All right, whatever. <laughs> All right, well, one ounce of 30 milliliters of lemon juice in with the rest of that stuff. Now, what's an interesting point that's gonna happen here is acid, lemon juice, it's acidic. So there's gonna be a little something that happens with that egg white in there. I don't exactly know what the chemical process is, but I'm pretty sure there's some chemistry at play here. Um, I'm gonna take my cutting board and put it off to the side and save it again for later. Kinda gonna need it again for the garnish. Gotta make things look pretty! The next ingredient that I require in my cocktail combination this week is, let's see what the thing says, three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters of the honey syrup. I described before how I made my honey syrup. I'm curious to how everybody else likes it. To be honest, I know, I I've been informed that you can make syrups in pretty much whatever ratio you want. Usually I just do half and half. It's very, very simple for me and I don't really have to think too much about it. And it makes things, honestly, this is incredibly sweet for something that was only one to one, I think. it's It's been a while since I made it, but I assume that was the case. But then again, you know, honey is very sugary on its own. So the need to add more sugar or anything like that is, was probably not necessary at all. And it tastes awesome. Oh my God, I don't remember what type of honey this is, but I took this out of the fridge the other day, not thinking that maybe maybe this wasn't good, maybe I needed to make another batch, and I put my finger in it, I took a little, took a little sip, and I was like, oh my goodness, this is so good, so good. A simple syrup indeed, some would say, indeed. But apparently, because of this, the property of like heating up water and stuff like that, you can have ratios of like up to like three to one, or four to one, I guess, the, dare I say five to one, I have no idea. But so you can get things that are very, very sweet in that way. And don't get me wrong, Simple? Yeah, I guess it's a little less simple than simple simple, but I'd still say it's still simple enough. It, oh my god, I love the way this tastes. It's super watery, as syrup would happen to be, uh, but it tastes like really sweet honey. Oh my god, it's awesome. I don't know how to describe the taste of honey, of a particular type of honey, compared to another type of honey. I'm not a, I'm not a honey sommelier or as one who tastes honey for a living, so I wouldn't be able to exactly take out the differences. I'm sure there's a bit of, there's definitely a bit of terroir happening here. You can really taste the bees in the countryside, but which it came from, which was probably New Jersey, because that's where I usually shop for my honey. The O, would you like some coffee with your sugar ratios? Dude, that is totally true. How many lumps do you take with your syrup? How many lumps do you guys take with your syrup? I don't think they take a lot of lumps. I think they just take whatever they've got and just go off with the black coffee or whatever, or the tea or whatever. Taste honey for a living, AKA being a bee. Well, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Bunny, bees taste nectar and the pollen and stuff. I don't know if they actually make the honey. Actually, come to think of it, I don't know what distinguishes honey from the rest of the, the, the bee stuff, the beehive. Like, does it become honey only after it sat there for a little while or does the bees make honey in their mouth and just kind of like spit take it into the, the combs? This is an interesting question. So I'm gonna try to, I, this is not a very good pouring container. I'm gonna try to add three quarters of an ounce of honey syrup, but if I have a little extra, that's okay. It'll just be a little sweeter. Three quarters. Oh my God, actually, that was pretty good. There's a little thing on the side. Excuse me. I'm not gonna let that go to waste. That tastes awesome. It's like candy. Love the taste of candy. Can't wait to use that again. But this was the, this was the one that I was trying to find a good cocktail to put in because I was really like, you know, I was thinking to myself, like, I kind of want to do honey syrup. I have honey. I, I don't know if I have honey syrup. Looked in the fridge, found honey syrup. And thought to myself, I want to use that in a drink. But I don't know if it's, if it's good. So I tasted it and was like, 
oh my god, that's freaking amazing. I gotta put that on a drink. And then was having a hard time finding it, so I went to the internet and found it. Thank you. Thank you, contributors of the Captain Cold website. We're not being sponsored. It's just cool that they gave me a free hat. Love free hats. Love that. In any case, I'll put that honey syrup off to the side. And the next ingredient that we need to add to our cocktail shaker is... Now, originally, the recipe that I found uh, had two ounces of rye whiskey and then half an ounce of blackberry syrup and I, I don't I didn't make any blackberry syrup I'm sorry that's on me I also don't have any blackberry liqueur sorry that's also on me so instead I'm gonna use some other blackberry I use black raspberry I got black raspberry over here I've got Chambord it's the little holy hand grenade and it's beautiful looking and it's kind of like I don't know if it really catches the light very well but it's very purple actually let me pull up my flashlight and show y'all because I think this is cool I think this is cool stuff so let's see let's get those Little holy purple lights in there. It is so cool looking. Love the way that looks. It honestly looks like a potion bottle itself. I freaking love that. Also, I gotta warn y'all because I've the, I'm one who've fallen victim to this. This little knob up here is not safe for you to grab by. This comes right off if you pull too hard. So actually, once upon a time, I was taking this out of one of my cabinets. It was low to the ground and I held it by here and it should have dropped to the ground. I was like, oh, did I break it? I did not break it. I saved the liquor, and that is good. Okay, now I just gotta open this thing up. And to be perfectly honest, I didn't, I didn't, ooh, I didn't do this beforehand, so I don't know whether it's gonna open up easily. I might have to get the white, I might have to get the glove. Nope, I did it. If you ever having trouble opening things up, a little bit of hot water, cause thermal expansion, and then a rubber glove, cause friction, baby. And so I need one ounce of this in my, in my, in my thing. It's also kind of it's a little it's a little bothersome to pour. You can't tell on the bottom, but there's a little like, you know the bottom of a wine bottle, it's got a little fingering dimple, I guess. There's a little fingering dimple in here. As you can see, I can put my finger all up in this thing. Context. But it doesn't really make it any easier to, to pour out of. So like this is this is not fun. But I need an ounce of it. So I'm just gonna use the jigger itself to hold up the rest of the holy hand grenade and then use the rest of my like my um my shoulder strength to keep it that way my arm strength so i'll add that in there oh i spilled a little bit that's okay that's okay honey is bee puke as you understand it they use their wings on to evaporate as much as water as they can out of it so they can store it without it fermenting and provide for themselves as needed oh that makes sense because if you leave it for too long it will eventually ferment on its own and you don't necessarily want that when i guess you're feeding what bee babies and whatnot your hand gesture helped show the divot a lot I'm very glad to hear that. I'm very glad to hear that we were able to convey the proper topology of the bottle so that you, even if you can't see it, even if you can't touch it, you know, you can like imagine in your mind's eye like, yes, I can feel the little fingering dimple. I knew it because Cameron told me so. And now you know, and that's a wonderful thing to learn things, you know? I just noticed I started saying you know a lot. That's not something I usually say. I'm the kind of guy who says like a lot, like this or like that. And I started saying you know. Kind of interesting. Dude, what's good? Astro's here. How's your night? My night's great. I hope yours is doing well too. They're making stuff with honey in it. I like that. And there's an egg in there too. And to be honest, I see a lot of, I see a lot of stuff happening in there. What did I put in this drink so far? There's an egg white in there. There's rye whiskey. There's lemon juice. There's honey syrup and the blackberry liqueur. You know, it's interesting. You can't necessarily see what I'm seeing. Actually, maybe you can. There's a little bit of chunk that appeared in there. You see that? I don't want to like pour this out the other side. Let's see. Let's see, see the chunk. I don't know if you can see the chunk. There's a little bit of chunkiness in there. You can kind of see it a little bit on the bottom. I don't exactly know what's going on there, to be perfectly honest. What is that? I'm gonna try to taste that and see what that is. Ooh. Well, it tastes like the lemon juice. I don't know what those little curds are. To be honest, I don't know what could be like curdling in here. But you have acid. You have acid plus. Whatever else is in there, it's very possible, it's very possible, I could be totally wrong on this, but maybe there's something that formed with the honey syrup as it sat for a little while that was curdleable, I guess? I don't know, not too bad. Egg curdle? Eggs curdle? Oh, they curdle. Oh, but that's like... Anyway, I'm gonna shake it up. Oh, you know what? I wonder, actually, I don't think I've ever looked this deeply at a drink that I shook with egg white. It's very possible, hear me out here, I could be totally wrong on the science here. If... So when you use egg, egg white and whatnot in a drink, it usually causes a foam to appear at the top. I wonder if these cur these curdles are actually floating at the top. So that makes me think that they're less dense than the rest of the drink itself. So I bet when I shake this one more time, those little curves are gonna break up even smaller and form that foam that appears at the top. That's my current working hypothesis. Let's put it to the test. 
Now we're questioning ourselves, indeed, but we will have a way to find out. Now, the only other thing that I need to add to this one, we've already added our rye whiskey, our egg white, our lemon juice, our honey syrup, and in this case, black raspberry liqueur. We also need some dashes of Angostura bitters. I, I like Angostura, you like Angostura. You can actually buy Angostura at your Target store, and apparently you don't need to go to a liquor store for this, which is actually quite interesting. I found Angostura bitters in my local Walmart, although I don't have a local Walmart here. I meant back at home. Although I'm pretty sure you still need to be carded to buy it because it's like 40 something percent alcohol. What, what, is, what is this? Product of Trinidad Tobago, ingredients, alcohol, water, sugar, gentian, natural flavors, and caramel color. Coloring. 44.7% alcohol by volume. That's uh, that's 89.4. That's math, baby. Egg foam is indeed a popular food trick, and it's wonderful. And I know that there are some people don't do eggs, and I know that. Uh, I believe there are equivalents of what you could use in place of egg, like egg substitutes and whatnot. And I want to say, don't quote me on it, you have to Google it yourself, is the most popular replacement is, some, is a substance called aquafaba, which I think can be used in place of egg to get that foam at the top. And I don't know if it has like a similar flavor or anything like that, because egg does have a little bit of flavor that imparts into the drink. I don't exactly know. I haven't used it myself. I haven't like had a, a reason to use that because I'm not like taste testing and I'm not particularly egg averse myself. But I'm sure there will come a time where I'm able to make it have the opera, ooh, excuse me, able to have the honor to make a drink for someone who's just like, mm, no thanks on the eggs, and I can be like, oh, actually, let's try this instead because you can enjoy the foam with the rest of us, but in your own special way. So I need the recipe called for one dash of Angostura bitters. I was thinking about doing two. But I'm actually thinking about doing one. I, I, I wonder, because I usually, I, usually I really overdo it with the Angostura bitters, but I don't think it's a bad thing because I really like the taste of it, but I think it will probably done better if I if I use this sparingly. So I will only do one dash of my Angostura bitters. That's it, one dash, just a little bit of dash, just enough to give it a little bit of color, and I think that'll be okay. Now, oh, we made it this far. We did it, everybody. Now we need to do the final shake. And it's a wet one, it's a wet shake. The ice is an hour in there. This time I'm pummeling cat on the correct side. I'm trying to do it a little bit more this time because I'm worried about that egg in there. Also, did you notice I'm at, when I look at chat now, I can actually look at the proper chat. The laptop is over here and chat is now right here. There's a little small thing that Anna pointed out to me. I was like, I, was like, I keep running into chat. I don't want to do that. She's like, put it on the other side. And I was like, great idea. I'll do that now. And I did it. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you, dear. I appreciate you greatly. If I could kiss you, I would. I love you, baby. Oh, in any case, pardon me, but what is being made? Oh, allow me to, I'll recollect the recipe for you. Don't you, don't you worry. I will absolutely go through all the ingredients and whatnot at the end and go full roundup. Yo, that was awesome. A bit creepy though. Well, okay. Well, if the one being kissed says it's creepy, then I clearly won't do it again. Although, I will poke you. Poke the deer. Oh, goodness. Sorry about that, Lorelai. I did not mean to poke you. I didn't, I didn't see you sneak up there. All right. So now, I'm gonna put it into a glass. I'm gonna put it into a glass, put it into a glass, put it into a glass. Now, actually, not quite yet. Actually, let me, hmm, we're not quite done with it yet. Let me put that back on there. Don't need to oxidize that just yet. I require some crushed ice. So actually, let me take my glass off the table so I don't absolutely make a mess. Let me, let me remove this too. So I also don't make a mess. I'll put that on the floor. There's nothing, there's nothing bad about the floor. I need some crushed ice. So I'm gonna make some crushed ice. And the way that I do that, because I don't have a proper mallet yet, is uh, I take ice and I whack it with a wrench. I don't exactly know how much crushed ice I need for this particular container, so I'm gonna go into my big ice category. I'm gonna take my cheesecloth that I got over here. This is what I usually do things. See, there's a proper method of crushing ice. Usually you would get a, an ice crushing bag that doesn't allow for flakes to come out in everywhere. I don't own one of those. I haven't bought one of those for myself and you would use a mallet. However, I, you know, mallets are cool. Mallets are fun. Mallets are proper. But when you're not a prim and proper girl, like myself, I'm not a very prim and proper girl. Not very prim and proper and not super like ultra girl. A little girly at times. We've all got a feminine side. Yeah, I don't do that. Where's my, where's my apparatus? I know I had my apparatus here just a moment ago. Where'd my apparatus go? Wait a minute. I know I had my apparatus. Where's my apparatus? I could have sworn. I, oh. I put my towel over my apparatus. It's a wrench. I use this. <laughs> Me, already drunk and no longer straight, wanting to be crushed. I mean, just for a moment. 
work with me here. Let's just say we have two volunteers who are willing to be smashed, crushed. This one can be Astro, and this one can be, I don't know, another gent of Astro's choosing. Oh, oh, we'd work. Oh, we'd work in general. We'd work great. So I'm going to take my wrench, not a mallet, and um, take my anger out. And as always, if you're doing anything like this, you have to keep yourself protected. So I'm going to go and get my goggles, which I believe are easily accessible over here. Excuse that tripod. Where's my goggles? Where are my goggles? Hello? Goggles. I have my goggles over here. Can I leave my goggles? Are you over here, goggles? Googlies! Googlies! Where are you? Goggles, where are you? Maybe they're down here. Hello, goggles. Maybe? No? Okay. Um... Oh my goggles work. Well, this is rather unsafe. Well, on the bright side, I have most of my shrapnel and whatnot in there. Please, protect yourselves. I don't know where I put my goggles, but I'm gonna be whacking anyway, so I guess I'll just look away. Wrench, the true multitasker. Anything as a mallet is enough for, so actually I'm just gonna look away from it. Actually, I'm gonna look this way so I can at least see my hand on my peripheral vision. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. Don't try this at home, unless you're a ice smashing professional, I guess. You could also just like use it like a ballad and be like, Hold on, I have an idea. Let's try this one for a change. Okay, that's just that's just loud and obnoxious. Ugh, I don't like that. Ugh. A phallus does not work in this situation. No! No, 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 no. All right, that's not really breaking the way I want to, but let's try it again. Oh, that's, that's much better now. There we go. You never know when pieces might pop up, and this is doing just fine. And you know what? I haven't actually destroyed my table yet, so this is actually very good. All right. That seems crushed enough. And that's a nice sack of ice. Love to see that. Now, let's get back to your regular, regularly scheduled cocktailing. Now that's a term I'd like to see defined. Now, for this particular cocktail, we're going to garnish it with a blackberry and a mint sprig. I have already applied the mint sprig to this particular container. I took it off of Menthol Man, the non-binary mint plant that sits in my uh, window. Not this window, the other window. Let's get a little, let's get a little, yeah, that's looking okay. I like the way that it looks. That looks very pretty. How's that looking? Yeah, baby! It's a little cocked, but you know what? Who isn't a little unstraight at times? So now what we're going to do is we're going to fill it with crushed ice. And um, and I'm going to try to... I don't have a clean way of doing this. I don't have, like, a scoop or anything like that. So I'm going to use my hands and be careful. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that. I'll put it inside. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. There we go. Yeah, we can be gentle about this. We don't have to be... Too crazy. There we go. Go, go ahead in there. Put, put some crushed ice in there. I don't know exactly how much you need. Uh, my impression is to fill it all the way up. I don't know. Whatever floats your boat. He speaks the truth. He speaks the truth. He speaks the truth. He is the truth speaker. Somebody buy this man a drink. Somebody make this man a drink. Somebody get this man the ingredients to make his own drink. He has the capability. You know, actually, this is this is actually some pretty interesting news. Here's some local news on the life of Karen and Anna. We actually looked at our first wedding venue yesterday, which was actually super duper cool. And we're looking at like plans for the wedding and stuff like that. And one of the things that we're considering is BY uh, an open bar. Open bar sounds wonderful. And a little bit of BYOB, because I got a lot of cocktail ingredients and I would love to use some of my own. And so they said, and I, I don't have it, I, uh, I have it written down, but I don't have it with me on, uh, with, on me. Uh, but they require a particular type of bartending certification and so long as you have a, a bartender with this particular certification They can serve alcohol at your wedding now Naturally the idea came up of like can I just serve alcohol at my own wedding? No I'm the star of the show and so is Anna so I will not be bartending for that But it sounds like it sounds like it would be a great time I do know a couple of people who probably will do that how much being cocked leaves you unstraight depends on how you see yourself Gosh, I do wonder sometimes so I have this glass filled with some, up some crushed ice, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the rest of the, the actual cocktail itself, which is in my shaker, and I'm going to double strain it. I I don't know if this is like a rule or anything like that, but usually what I do, and I don't remember where I heard it from, is you take any sort of drink that contains an egg in it, excuse me, and you double strain it. It kind of gets out the little bits and whatnot. We only want the smallest of pieces of foamy bits, and that'll work. Homie, we totally want to see you and Anna get married. We're thinking it'd be cool. It's hopefully gonna be a big one. We're expecting like two. I think I think our upper our upper estimation of like two hundred to like two hundred and fifty people. It's two years down the line. It's it's nowhere anytime soon. We got plenty of time to plan things out. Plenty of time to figure out travel plans or whatever. You know, it'll be here in Philadelphia most likely because we'll be here for a little while. Anyway, let's see. 
200 to 250 people. That's a lot of people. Dude, that'd be awesome. All right, let's fill it up and see what we got. That's, that's going really nicely. I like that. I just noticed, I think I need a straw with this. So I think I'm gonna real quick run and go get a straw. Oh, that's excellent. Oh, that's excellent. And I'm glad I double strained it. There's a little bit of, there's a little bit of blah in there. You don't run a little bit of blah like that. Oh my goodness. Dude, you got two years in advance to make that work and we'll bring gifts too. Oh, it's crazy. Don't feel pressured to bring a gift. We still haven't even figured out the registry yet. Oh my goodness. Oh, but I appreciate your generosity. I'm gonna put this down here real quick, real quick. I'm gonna go get, I'm gonna go get a straw. Ah, excuse me. I'm gonna go get a straw, I forgot about that. What color should my straw be? I'm thinking, oh, uh, what are my options? I'm thinking a rainbow, a rainbow straw. The idea of rainbow straw is a good idea for me right now. Hey everybody. Oh, I'm gonna bring a gift and you too will like it. I like that. I think that's okay. All right, I'm gonna put a little, a little straw in there. Beautiful. Oh my God. Oh my God. Hi, I'm so beautiful. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I think you're pretty beautiful. Although I can't, I, I, granted, I can't see what you look like, but I have full faith that on the inside, you're just as beautiful as the rest of us. Right? That's what Astro said, right? I'm not egotistical. You are egotistical. You're the one who's beautiful. In any case, please allow me to, to fill this back up. Okay. Um, I need to finish up my garnish, so I'm actually gonna take some blackberries and I'll put that on there. Here, here's the proof. These are berries that are black. I bought them from Whole Foods. They say only the finest berries. Driscoll's, organic, bialocki. I don't know how to speak that language. Blackberries, nures. And this is your reference to the blackberry. This man is legit the favorite Wednesday streamer. Well, you know, I stream uh, every other Mondays as well. Just saying, just a, just a little plug in there, a little self plug, shameless plug. Every other Mondays, we play in the games, we do a lot of things around here. I'm gonna just cake, I don't know, I, I, blackberries, mm, delicious. Actually, those are very delicious. Oh my God. I thought blackberries were a little more sour. These aren't sour at all. Wow, these are delicious. But I'm using one for a little cocktail garnish. I'm not gonna take, I, there's not really any direction that I'm going with this. I'm just gonna put a little, couple of blackberries along the back and see how that works. I'm gonna cut them up with a little bit of knife so that they have some space to hang on the rim and I think we'll be okay. All right, I'm just gonna very carefully, very carefully do like that. I'm not cutting towards myself, always cut away from yourself. Just kind of put some blackberries on there. Look at that. Ah, oh, look at that, it's beautiful. Oh, you can't really see that one from the back so I'll put another one on there. Oh, I fully recommend him. I, I will. I won't agree or disagree with that. Clearly, I'm a little biased. Let's see. Oh, that's looking. Oh, there's a little bit of blackberry running down the side of my drink. We're fine. We're fine. That's that's looking pretty good. Honestly, I think the, the angle could be a little bit better. That's looking pretty good. I think that's pretty cute. It's a lot more. Honestly, it's a lot more opaque than I thought it was going to be. So maybe there's actually. The, it looks like there's actually more bits in there than I thought. I wonder if I did something wrong. I don't know. It's a little confusing. Confusing. Homie, you honestly like the fucking bit, dude, dude. Thank you. Quick aside, like quick, quick aside moment. I, I continue like sometimes, sometimes let's take a little, little moment to just consider like philosophy and whatnot. Sometimes you don't exactly know what you're doing. Sometimes you think to yourself like, why do you do this stuff? What's the motivation behind it? And I think sometimes I'm like, you know, I like streaming and whatnot, but like, is there? You know, is there more than that? Is it just like a selfish thing that I do? Is there something more like that? And honestly, some of the coolest things that I get to have the pleasure of doing is be able to meet like awesome people like here on the internet. Quick, quick backstory. I was never the kind of person to talk online. I would never say anything in chats and I'm still a bit of a lurker myself. But for some reason, when that camera goes on and I get to see this stuff, this like actual people saying actual words that I can actually see and actually talk back to. It's like the coolest feeling in the world. I loved doing theater when I was younger, but there was really never that opportunity to like really connect with the audience and stuff like that. And I did a couple of improv classes and stuff too, which I think kind of helped with everything going on here. Not to, not to toot the horn of improv comedy and stuff, but like, it's awesome. It's really cool. And it actually, I, I, have, I would be lying if I didn't say that the like streaming in and of itself has kind of filled the void that I feel that theater left in me when I stopped doing theater around college time. And it's, 
It's awesome. And the only reason, the only reason that I feel like I can continue doing this, aside from the fact that I want to play video games, I want to make cocktails, and I like the attention, is the fact that like I have the opportunity to come back and continue like meeting more people and talking with more folks and extending the story of this every single time and thinking that I'm making a good difference in this world. And even if it's a small one, you know, there's a there's the straw that broke the camel's back. And I'm not trying to break, break backs or anything like that. That would be catastrophic. And vandalism. And assault, probably. But, you know, metaphorically speaking, it's the little bit that I think matters. And I thank you all for making it possible because honestly, you wouldn't be... Technically, y'all wouldn't be here on this channel without me making it, so like, I think that's about the extent of where my involvement has been. Everything else is totally without out of my control, and I think it is the coolest thing. And Anna says, you can read? Yeah, duh, I can read. I was trying to have a moment over here. Animal abuse, the back, the broken is the actual camel. Oh my goodness, dude, I'm a little drunk right now, but no joke. Oh, oh, I love this. I love this. I, I remember, I remember when it happened. I remember when I met Astro. I remember he popped in, I think, many hours into a Super Mario Sunshine stream that I was having. The only Super Mario Sunshine stream that I've had, and I think this is one of the cool, like, the most lasting online relationships that I've gotten, uh, like, out of everything that I've ever done so far. And this is only within, like, the last year or two. So, I, like, say, with, with oh, eyes, eyes wide open, I cannot wait to see what, how things are a year from now, two years from now, five years from now, because I, personally, don't feel like stopping. This is way too fun. In any case, let's get back to the let's get back to the swing of things. I still have a recipe that I need to recollect for folks and whatnot. Um, and so that recipe happens to be, in this case, the black light. Yo, how's this music? Oh, oh my god, it has been a year since I made affiliate. Ah! Oh. Yo! Vibe check. Gotta love that. Okay, so the cocktail that we made tonight. The ambiance is just totally fitting here. Is a cocktail called the Black Light. This is a little bit modified. I got the idea that I got the cocktail base recipe from somebody that goes by Avalon Home Bar on Instagram, who is also a member of Crafted Pour, this website that we post recipes on every once in a while. Not a sponsorship. This is a really cool website if you make cocktails and stuff like that and want those recipes. But um, they made the black light, which is a riff on the port light, which came from a book called Smuggler's Cove, which I decided to modify because I don't have enough blackberry ingredients, so I decided to go with a little bit of black raspberry because they're both blackberries, so to speak. Uh, and this is created with one and a half ounces or 44 milliliters of rye whiskey. Let me go over here. Let me go over here. There we go. One egg white, dry shaken all together. One ounce or 30 milliliters of lemon juice, freshly squeezed if you can help it. Three quarters of an ounce of honey syrup, which is just equal parts honey and equal part water, boiled together. One ounce of black raspberry liqueur, the original called for blackberry syrup. And then about a dash of Angostura bitters. Shake that up, add a bit of crushed ice, add some garnish, and bam. You got it. I don't even know what it tastes like. Ah, oh, happy year. I love that. It fits so well. We just hit different. It feels so genuine and nice. I hope it, I, 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 hope, I hope it does. I think I'm being genuine. You know, I, a, a quick backup from that. I feel like sometimes I suffer from like a very, very mild, very, very mild, not diagnosable case of like imposter syndrome where I'm just like, yeah, 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 yeah. I am being genuine. I am being nice. But by nature of me admitting that, that obviously means that I'm not being nice. I don't know. It's a whole, it's a whole... We got things. We got gears turning up in this head. Everybody's got gears turning, you know? But so, let's see how this thing finds out. Let's, let's see how this thing finds out. I don't even know what I'm saying right now. It's a wonderful time. It's such a good time to be alive. I love... Thanks, you guys. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that so much. How's the, how's the music now? Is it still good? Oh, yeah. We're back to it now. Just live your life. And that applies to everybody. Just live your life. Live your life. And if you're living your life the way that you want to, I think you're doing it right. The black light. Actually, wait, I do have a black light. Where's my black light? Oh my god. Oh, I just thought! I have a black light! Oh, but I can't sh uh, it's not gonna do anything to drink. Actually, I was looking up things before, before this. If you want to make your drink glow in the dark, and we'll do this sometime. I'm not doing it now because I don't have it prepared. But we will make a glow in the dark drink. And I don't mean I just throw a bunch of glow sticks into it. I mean, I'm gonna put ingredients into the glass that when you shine a black light on it, it's gonna glow. I just don't have it yet. But I know I need tonic water and I need a black light. And I know I've got both of those in these apartments somewhere. I just don't know. But the black light... As 
saw some of your channel and I was like, like, I don't know, but bro, this is worth it. Oh, yo, I am glad to hear that. Oh my goodness, I'm glad to hear that. Hopefully, at the very, very least, at the very, very least, you can get a, oh, a bunch of the posters? Oh, the posters are totally worth it. Oh, all this stuff. And hopefully you get, I don't know if anybody drinks out there. You don't have to drink alcohol and stuff. You can do mocktails. You got mocktails. It happens every once in a while. Just not as often because those aren't the bottles that are up there. But I hope you get some pointers from that too. Dude, this is my Marky Moo poster. This is my Ruby and Sapphire poster. This one's because I used to watch Markiplier a lot. Stopped for a little while. I'm back into them now. What a role model. And I'm not really a role model kind of guy. This one's Ruby and Sapphire from Steven Universe. Oh, just the idea of like two people just loving the way that they want to. I love it. Yo, welcome to the party. Curry. Curry Kage? Curry Kage. I need for my party heads. There's the party hat that I was looking for. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. But more importantly, welcome. Welcome. You are my role model. That's too much. I shouldn't be anybody's role models. I'm a terrible influence. I also got, we also got Lilo and Stitch up here. I can do a Stitch voice, but that's not really why we have that thing up there. It's just there because I don't really like Disney. But also, Stitch is an awesome character. And there's a little Moana thing. We've got a couple of sparkles from the movie Frozen. And uh, these are two most movie posters that Anna won by just going to the movies at her college. Of course, Jurassic World and Coco. And I have, dude, if you thought this number of posters was wild, I have more posters back there, and I have more posters in our bedroom, and there's a bunch of magnets all over the refrigerator and whatnot. As soon as I figure out how to make the, the, the cable on this camera wider, like, this camera will not just be in one of two locations. It's going to be mobile. But I haven't quite figured out how to do it yet. Ugh. Oh. But in any case, Stitch Game Supreme, hell yeah, hell yeah. Now I gotta find a poster of you to put on my wall when I get back to Texas. I don't think one of those exists. I don't think so. I have a little sprite. Technically, I have a little profile picture of a little sprite guy that I guess you could blow up real big, but like, I don't know, there's not a lot of substance there. I'd rather that type of stuff go to like small creators out there who are doing this art stuff for a living. That way they get to reap the benefits of like that because that's where it's all about. Support your small, support your local businesses, support your local streamers, support your local artists and whatnot. Dude, find the littlest guy that you can on the internet who's doing the, the type of art style that you want and just be like, bro, I will pay you for what you do. Can I make a commission? And I bet people will be like, yo, it'd be great. And it has a drawing of him that he did. No, 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 that's, that's okay. We don't need to post the picture of my self-portrait. I'll just go grab it. If it's really that big of a deal, I go get my own self-portrait. I'll go grab it, I know, exa I know exactly where it is. I wouldn't say that I'm incredibly proud of the work, but I, I did a self portrait Honestly, I did a self-portrait, and I was really, I was really, really proud of it. I mean, I said I wasn't proud of it, but it's not the best thing in the world. But, you know, not, not every piece of artwork is, but this is the self-portrait I did in my face. Not too bad. It was a, it was a Valentine's Day gift to, to my dearest. That's pretty good. It's not the best thing in the world. It also has a poem on the back. Yo, <laughs> she didn't find out until at least a year later there's an entire poem on the back of this. To Anna. And it's, oh, the cutest thing. It's like one of the, oh, is it like one of the ones Jack drew of his French girls? Oh my goodness, draw me like one of your French girls. No, it's just my face, unfortunately. It's not the rest of my hot and sexy body. Who said that? Not me. Completely forgot that this drink was just sitting here. This is an awesome drink. Quick aside, as I describe how wonderful that this drink is. So, the first thing that hits, honestly, it, it's kind of, it's kind of miraculous. The biggest thing that hits you is that Chambord. The biggest thing that hits you is the black raspberry liqueur that's in there. And there's only an ounce, but for some reason, that particular flavor takes the entirety of this. Oh my goodness. It's really, really good. It's got the perfect balance of like, it's not sour, but it's, it's very, very sweet. Very, very sweet. And yes, you can hear the poem, but I want to make sure I give my notes on this cocktail first. So we'll get there, I promise, we'll get to it. I don't remember what it says anyway, so it'll probably be embarrassing as all hell, but I wrote it and that's a part of our history and we should be proud of our history. Don't forget about your history. Remember your history. But I guess it's got a nice smoothness to it too because of that egg white in there. It's nice. It's like, it's like really good. I'm usually not a fan of like sourness, sour like drinks and whatnot, but this is like really, really good. It's really not that sour. And luckily, luckily, I still have more left of it, so I could totally. Oh my god, I could still fill. My... I could fill myself up a little bit more. Look at that! Oh, I love that! This is really good. Wow! Every once in a while, I feel like I find a drink that is really, really good, dude. Avalon Home Bar, Mr. Chris Russell from the Crafted Poor. You did it, my friend. You got something good. I love this one. 
You will be hearing from me, sir. You will be hearing my praises. I like the one that's hanging in the bedroom better. Oh, that Valentine. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good one too. We'll have to save that to another time. Okie dokie. It's time for Cameron Poetry Time. This is this is actually not the first poem that I've read on stream now. This is not the first time that I've done this. I seem to do this. I'm realizing now, apparently there's a lot more literary work of me out there than I give myself credit for. Okay, so. <clears throat> and now, a dramatic poetry reading. How's, how's the music for this? Is the good music for this? Yeah, this is good. I like this. I like this. Now, nah, pull out the other one. Please, it's better. No, you're gonna have to wait till another time for that. Somebody's gonna have to remind me of it, and then we'll do it next time. This poem, written for for Anna by Cameron, who spells his name with the X, is called Distance Sucks. I know that despite the distance between our bodies, our minds stay connected and one. I know that despite the differences between our minds, our spirits, our connection will never come undone. You know that my spirit is always one step behind, tripping and trying to catch the trailing tail that grows within faith in someone, something. Tells me how to bind my soul to another being, pulses from a heartstring connected to another, quietly and forcefully beating. Our body stabilized, not by consuming, but by breathing. As one does without knowing, it kind of just does. It kind of just happens that when I close my eyes, I see you. There's no thought about it. I just drift across the unconscious plane and stumble and find this beautiful natural scene that feels oh so right and warm and right and peaceful and I know that despite your lack of vocabulary, our lips need not speak a comprehensive language. I know that despite my loose lips, our relationship finds strength to salvage what you know about me is that I am too far and too distant to hold you in my arms and comfort you with my touch, but I know that despite the distance between us, our hearts stay in tune like a song. That song playing in my mind on that beautiful scene, you know, the one that feels oh so right and warm and right and peaceful, and that song, despite growing soft with the distance between our bodies, never stops playing. We know that despite the fact that our song is virtually inaudible to each other at times, our souls still resonate in sync, not because we hear the song, because we are the song, and I know that I love music and ours is the best. Thank you. Snap, 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 snaps. That's beyond beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm honestly curious to see, like, I don't know. I don't know. I'd love to, I don't know exactly how much poetry I have out there, but like, honestly, I don't even think that's the important part. I'm wondering to see what everybody, cause like, cause like, like I, I didn't do, I don't think I did a lot of poetry. Uh, Cause I feel like I just kind of felt embarrassed about it. I was like, I don't need to do poetry, but words and whatnot. Like, ugh, I, I don't know about that. But like, I've been getting better with that as I've gotten older. And I wrote this. I didn't date this. I don't exactly know what year that came from. But I don't remember whether it, it wasn't. It wasn't this one that I wrote. I wrote this one I think in college while I was sitting in my dorm room. Another one that I wrote. I don't remember what it's called. It might have been this one, but I remember one very distinctly. I was listening to music from Stardew Valley as I sat in my parents' front porch, just looking out at our front yard, just feeling this incredible sense of like, like de depression and sadness and longing. And I think I wrote that last year or the year before. I don't know where that one is or what it's called, but oh, card is gushing. No wonder Anna fell. No, 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 no. She's a, I, I'm the lucky one here. I would think at least. I don't even know how to put it in words and whatnot. I'd spend too much time. Catch 22. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You are truly, truly too kind. Truly too kind. Ooh. Excuse me. Choking up a little bit myself. I get like, I get like really nervous when I do things like this. I get like really, really embarrassed. And like my, my heart starts pumping and whatnot. And I'm like, oh my God. I've never seen Astro's emotional just vibe. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. Thanks everybody. Y'all are... You are so cool. Astro, Curry, Lorelai, Disney Queen, everybody out there. Everybody, no matter who you are. Uh, Dakota, I know, is out there somewhere. Vio, I know, is out there somewhere. Neko, I know you're out there somewhere. There are so many people. There's like over 100 people right now that I can be like, thank you. And that's so cool. Oh, my God. It is so awesome. Like, ah. Oh, it's so cool. I just want to point out, too, like, th this shirt doesn't apply to you. Any of you. If you're see if you're seeing this, that this does not apply to you, I will not cut you. Instead, actually, you know what? I will cut you. I will cut you with my words. I will cut you with this content. I will cut you down to bite-sized pieces so that you know you're like, oh my god, I feel so important. Yes. Yes. Good vibes, good vibes. Wait, 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 wait. I remember something else. Oh my god, wait a minute. I remember. I remember the vibes. 
We spent too much money on this at a children's store. This is the coolest thing. This is the coolest thing. This is the coolest thing. I'm gonna present it properly. All right, here we go. Cut us a piece of blackberry. I'll eat one. You don't even have to make me. Here we go. Three, two, one. What should you be feeling right now? Good vibes. Oh my god, it's backwards. Hold on, I screwed that up. I screwed that up. Hold on. Three, two, one. You should be feeling good vibes. Good vibes, everybody. Good vibes indeed. Oh my goodness. Good vibes till next time, y'all. Cameron. Oh, just kidding. In any case, I, I'm just about done with my, my little ego trip over here. My little wonder with this cocktail over here. It's very good. I will be... I will absolutely be posting this later on, as I always do. I always post all my recipes. Let me take a quick Instagram picture. It looks so good! Oh my god! Oh, that's not in the light. Hold on, let me take a quick, quick picture. I've been trying to get better at my, with my pictures and stuff like that. Here we go. That's not bad looking. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. I always feel bad taking these things. Ego trips hit differently. Bro, poem and self-portrait. Oh my god, does that fit all in one clip? Mm. Wait! There's an Insta that you're not following yet? Yeah, there is. There's an Instagram now. It's got all the cocktail recipes and stuff on there. And I post things like, I, I this is this was my mentality. I put the cocktail recipes on there and the pictures and whatnot. And then every once in a while, like sometimes I get, I, I go out and I eat food sometimes. I go to restaurants and stuff. So I'll try to post like the, the stuff that I'm drinking on there and just kind of give my thoughts on it. Because I, I don't know. I've always been interested in content where somebody goes like, yo, this is what I made or this is what I had. And this is what I think of it. And honestly, if the person that I'm watching says, yo, this is good, then my thought is, yo, this might be good for me too. And I can share that with somebody else and pass it along and just pay it forward. And that's the way the world gets around. At least that's what I think. Good vibes indeed. Oh my goodness. Dude, I just have no words. I have no words. Sometimes, dude, sometimes, dude, sometimes streams in general just hit differently. Sometimes these things just hit differently. And my goodness, the, it's like, the, it's not like nights like tonight where I look at myself in the mirror, I look at myself in the, the feed that I'm watching of myself to make sure that everything goes well and the audio tracks and all that stuff. This is what reminds me that this is why I'm continuing to do this because it makes, at the very least, I think it's making at least one person smile. And it's not just me. And that I think is a good message. That I think epitomizes what we got going on here. Oh hell yeah indeed. So, thank you everybody. We're coming to cocktail time. Tonight we had the black light, slightly modified, but still wonderful all the same. I thank you all for coming to this side of the bar. I'm gonna move to the other side of the table and play a little, gay little game called Graveyard Keeper, where I think I just figured out how to actually rip the darkness right out of you. So there will be nothing but positive vibes left. And that, I think, is a wonderful, wonderful thing. So thank you everybody. If you'd like to stick around, you are absolutely more than welcome to, but not before I read this is, yeah. Like having two types of reviewers, like, oh, for the, going back to like the people talking about how they feel about certain things. Like when you have two types of reviewers, like those who just have real fun and passion for their niche that works for Lorelei, if you know you wouldn't like the subject, and those who seem to have tastes like Lorelei's, for example, or yourself, so you have hopes that you agree with their opinions. Yeah, sometimes, dude, I don't even have to like what you like, but if you're really into what you're doing, then I feel like I'm gonna vibe with that. Sometimes, like, I, I don't remember who it was, but somebody was saying like, there's something about like, there's something about like talking with somebody who is very passionately going about something, going on about something that they're really passionate about, that hits differently. That type of like, I guess the word is passion, is like tangible sometimes in conversations. Hopefully. Sometimes I feel like I'm that way with cocktails and whatnot. I don't know, I don't know. Anyways, off to the other side of the board. Thank you everybody. It's been lovely, good vibes, good vibes. I'll catch you on the other side as always. Have a wonderful evening, day, night, and whatnot. If you're heading off, if you are, no pressure. Everybody gotta sleep, everybody gotta work day. Maybe it's like maybe it's like early morning and you gotta go to work now. In which case, well, it's about whatever time it is where you are. Have fun at work. Go get him. Go get him, Tiger. You got this. You got this. We'll be here. We'll be here. Alright. Break time, everybody. We'll be back in a little bit. Peace out till then, y'all. Not me. Can I have a body, please? Can I have a body? Please, please, please. I want a dead body. Please, please, please. I want a dead body.
everybody. I want it to be doing dark and scary on the inside. Oh my god, I need more carrots. Wait, don't go away. Don't go away. 